6,640 pounds, the new Winnebago Voyage 2427 rear bath couples camper here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. As we go through, you're going to hear me compare this to the Winnebago Mini version of this floor plan a lot. My goal here is to help you understand where a Mini and a Voyage differ, because they both build the same layout. So the question is, you know, why is the Voyage more money and what am I getting for it? And the short answer is, a lot. This is kind of like if a Winnebago Mini and a big fifth wheel had a baby. It's got a lot of fifth wheel qualities wrapped up into a travel trailer. So if you're looking for that retirement trailer, or if you need a taller shower, or if you want that extra space and luxury, but you're not looking to get a big three quarter ton truck and a 35 foot fifth wheel, this is that last one you ever need to buy kind of trailer. So first to look with the slide closed, you can see we've got a nice full viewing window in our entry door, which doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the slide closed, just we're looking at it. Um, there's different seating arrangements available. We've outfitted this one with an L lounge. Now you can see that we've got the slide out closed here. When the L lounge in a slide is closed, it comes pretty close to the entertainment center. The good news is it only overlaps for about six inches. So doing what I'm about to do, simply stepping over it and, you know, walking over here into the kitchen area, not that big a deal. And you do that and you can see that, yeah, we can get to the cabinetry here, we can get to the sink, we can get to the uh, drawer space, we can get to a lot of things very quickly and easily, including the uh, available larger four-door fifth wheel style refrigerator. The bathroom's behind us, that's very easily accessible, but the bedroom is behind the slide wall. And this is one of the areas where the Winnebago Voyage differs in this floor plan from the Winnebago Mini. Because unlike the Winnebago Mini, the Voyage has a second door that goes into the bedroom right here. And as we enter, you'll notice that we've also applied the 70 by 80 king bed upgrade to this. That is one of those uh, fifth wheel sort of features that you're going to find in this RV that we're gonna talk about as we go. So if you do need to get in here, uh, yes, you might have to go inside or outside, but the fact is you can fully access this RV in transit. Now using some Hollywood movie magic between uh, sections there, I went ahead and opened the slide out. So as we come around the corner, this is what you're going to see in the mornings, and it is a treat. Now compared to the Mini, this thing looks and feels larger because it is. This has a full seven foot ceiling clearance, which gives this thing a huge open feel. That is a quality that uh, you'd also find here at Halid RV and our Eagle HT travel trailers. This is something very similar to the 262 RBOK, but it's still uniquely Winnebago. Like if you look at this, you see shades of an Eagle HT, you see shades of a Freedom Express, like with the Asdell and whatnot, but the combination of the, uh, you know, the HSLA steel chassis that we'll talk about outside um, and just the little Winnebago things that they do. It's still very uniquely Winnebago. Now, obviously, we've got ourselves a nice no-neck wrecker entertainment center TV directly across from the seating right here. And below that, you've got our electric space heating fireplace taking the nip out of the air. You can see how there are not heat vents in the floor of these. A uh, little bit of storage on either side of that fireplace. We'll crack that open later when we take a look at the kitchen area. But real quick note, above the uh, entertainment unit there, you actually have a wireless phone charging pad, which is pretty darn cool. And since this is taller than the Mini, the Voyage series really utilized that height by adding like extra overhead compartment storage where the, the, the Mini simply won't have it. You know, that's one of the nice things going on here. Uh, these will have the uh, larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner, and this is a new product, so pardon me, I can't remember if that's standard or optional. I know that we're going to have it every single time here. Another thing different here on the Voyage versus the Mini, like they both have central air, that's nice. Both of them have AC ducts that can turn and close individually. But the Voyage, because it's so tall that some people might have a hard time reaching the ceiling light fixtures, you have a wall switch for all our main cabin lights instead of, uh, you know, individually, you know, clicked lights. The sliding doors for the bedroom and bathroom are nicely trimmed out, give it a big open look and feel. And let's talk about this sofa. And the thing is, we have a lot to talk about because, uh, you know, there's different seating arrangements in here, but these L lounges, they fit this floor plan exceptionally well. Since this floor plan does only allow for the space to have one seat in it, it really gives you like, uh, it's a Swiss Army sofa, because it only does everything. What I like about it in this mode, obviously directly faces the TV, 
but it's long enough that if a tall person like me wanted to just lie sideways on it without turning it into a sleeper mode and just catch a, you know, snooze in and out of a rainy day movie, it gives me plenty of room to do so. But it also very quickly converts into a neat little Winnebago Dinofa. But what's kind of cool is the uh, table that attaches to the front of this sofa can actually self-store in this little flip-up storage section over here. And there you see it, the tabletop and the little like table leg that hooks onto it. Plus there is storage below, like a chest below the hide-a-bed section of this, which I think is really cool because, you know, you could use it for general storage, but uh, also it makes a great little uh, place to store the, um, the bedding for a guest. And since this RV is so tall, you may also notice how they made it a taller slide out with that nice little accent light fixture above there. They just really dressed and impressed this thing all the way through. Which also means you've got those nice big breeze through windows there to enjoy some good scenic viewing when you actually are getting a bite to eat. Now, uh, the countertops in here, they're all a sealed edge thermal foil material, whether it's that table uh, the bathroom or the kitchen. So if you happen to spill a drink or something, obviously you want to get it wiped up, but it's not going to do any harm here. And that's what I like about this. If one person wants to sit and eat, or one person wants to sit and work, while one person still wants to lounge, on the left you still really have like a lounger, while you still have room to eat on the right hand side. And if you drop a couple chairs in front of it right here, you've also got the perfect little place to entertain some guests, and several adults can very easily, you know, like play some cards and chew the fat here. But the sleeper setup here is absolutely awesome because it can very easily fit to adults. But notice how it doesn't really intrude into the RV. It doesn't stick out past that normal lounge section. So if someone is sleeping here, they're not going to interfere with you in the mornings. You know, you can still walk around and get to the bathroom or at night, you know. Roll down blackout shades. Also another one of those kind of higher end features you find here on the Voyage. Whereas you'd normally find nice pleated shades on the, uh, you know, like standard mini series. So like I said, even with that sleeper open, we can very easily navigate through here. Very handy for getting to that bathroom in those wee evening hours. <laughs> no pun intended on the whole wee section. <laughs> a little nod to my friends across the pond there. Porcelain foot flush stool and a big old large shower with the Winnebago propaganda poster in there currently. Uh, trailer might be shaking around a little bit right now because one of our quality uh, inspection agents is actually on the roof checking it out. At the time I'm filming this, this is actually still hooked up to the RV delivery driver's truck. Um, you know, we're very proactive on quality control. Now, something I'm just kind of tuning into here, I didn't even really think about previously, but the fact that this has clear shower doors, it's going to make this room look and feel even larger. Now, with this having a seven foot interior, you will not have headroom issues uh, in here as you could with some smaller trailers. Now, over on the side, more of that sealed edge countertop space, stainless sink and some actual decent counter space here in this bathroom. Plus, this is where we're going to see the beginnings of a lot of storage in this RV. Because along with a seven foot ceiling comes a seven foot tall linen cabinet, which is pretty darn awesome if you ask me. Now they did something kind of different below the sink here, but I like it. They just gave us a big giant drawer as opposed to just a cabinet that swings open. It's just those little voyage touches coming into play. But then as we turn around right next to the door, Man, the kitchen just starts kicking in with this walk-in pantry. Seven foot tall walk-in pantry, because of course we have a seven foot tall trailer. You see you got those handy little coat hangers there. And they do put a light all the way up to the ceiling. I just can't even get the camera twisted around enough to, to I'd have to look straight up to see it. But what's nice, once again, you don't have to be seven foot tall to get to it, because they give us just a little hallway switch to get to that. Now I said we'd come back to the entertainment center, and so we shall. Little, I don't know, DVD pockets on either side of the fireplace there, but they just didn't waste the space, which is nice. But I didn't talk about this sooner. The TV can pivot for easy viewing. That's a double jointed swing arm, so it can face anywhere you want. And we looked at these cabinets, but we didn't see them open earlier. The uh, All the cabinetry, of course, pocket screwed with hardwood cabinet door frames, and those uh, struts making it easy to get in there. Now, the RV is not exactly level right now, so this door doesn't want to play nice with me but a convection microwave oven, a residential size convection microwave oven. That is again, a luxury fifth wheel feature that we're finding here in a travel trailer. And again, that's where the, like, this is an odd product. Like you start to say, yeah, well, it's sort of like this. Well, no, it's sort of like that, but it's not exactly like anything, is it? Those seven foot tall ceilings giving us those big overhead cabinets, doubling the space with the shelves. 
and a full counter to cabinet backsplash over that huge prep space with an easy reach set of outlets right there for your coffee maker and a big kitchen breeze window. Also, we'll see it in a second, that is a big stainless farm sink uh, with split covers. So you have as much or, uh, you know, as much, I guess, dishwashing space or veggie prep space, whatever the case may be that you need when you need it. By the way, bigger 22 inch oven versus a more common 16 here also. And they gave you a choice below that sink. It has a shelf in it by default, but it could easily be removed if you wanted to make it more of a, uh, you know, wastebasket type space. And there's a, uh, a quick look at that stainless farm sink that I mentioned, just so that you can obviously see it for yourself. Nice and deep. Big pots and pans will fit in there just fine. I love the way they kind of framed up that bedroom sliding wall door because it is a big old kind of barn style sliding wall, but it's a true pocket door. It actually slides into the wall, which... A lot of times when you hear us say the phrase pocket door in this business, it actually is just a sliding door. A pocket door actually goes into the wall like this one does. Now, here's a big one. A fifth wheel sized four door gas electric fridge freezer. That is, I think it's like 12.7 cubic foot or something like that. That's the same kind of fridge you get in an Eagle fifth wheel in a Montana high country or something like that. It is an expensive upgrade that we have applied to this RV. But show me another 24-foot box travel trailer, 27-foot tip-to-tail, which is how the model number works on the Voyage, just 24, 27, if you notice that. Show me another travel trailer this size with that massive fridge. It is an absolutely outstanding quality. These Voyages are different. They are not uh, directly obvious. And while I was swapping out my battery, someone was kind enough to lay on the bed and not put the uh, bedspread back in place. So if you could do me the salad of overlooking that, I would greatly appreciate it. But as long as we're talking about it, 70 by 80 king bed upgrade. We mentioned that sooner, but I do kind of want to circle back to that. We still have handy side stands. And if you notice, there's household and USB plugs on either side of the bed. And since the ceiling, you know, I don't have lights on in here. Hold on, let me flick the switch. Someone was playing around in here while I was gone. Look at that. But again, a handy light switch for all of our ceiling lights. So you don't need to be super duper tall. But since the RV is seven foot tall, they could give us that overhead cabinet there. And you're not going to have issues with banging your head if you sit up in bed at night. We've already seen that second entry door. But what I want to show you here is something a little different. They handled their storage under the bed in a little different way than you commonly see. Sort of similar to Rockwood, but not exactly like almost anything else I've ever seen. Like, at a glance, you're like, big deal. You know, it's a, it's a plywood deck base, which is nice. There's gas struts, which is nice, but so what? There's storage under the bed. It's not just that there's storage under the bed, it's the way that they segmented it that I love. Because both sides of the bed have these uh, handy dresser drawers that slide open. So you have even, like you have separate hanging, separate dresser space. Then you have these big kind of general storage areas right here that are perfect for like flat totes or big stuff or chairs or whatever you want. You know, uncommonly used appliances like a griddle. They'd fit perfectly under there. Now below that front master bed, you have this huge fifth wheel style drop frame storage compartment. There is actually LED lighting all the way across the nose here. That's what those black switches there will uh, activate. And you can see it does pass all the way through. You can see that all aluminum skeleton. Also see that heat duct. This is a forced air heated compartment, very similar to a lot of luxury fifth wheels. But that is not the kind of thing you typically find on most travel trailers. The slam latches and magnet catches make it easy to get in and out there. And I want to point out that water heater. That's not something I talk about on travel trailers a lot because they all pretty much have the same water heater, except for this Winnebago. This has a big luxury fifth. This has the same uh, water heater as like a Montana, a big full-time living Montana RV. This has a 10 gallon vessel with gas and electric uh, uh, facilities that can operate simultaneously for faster recharge. It is very cool. So you've got, you know, taller ceilings, bigger refrigerators, bigger water heaters, bigger drop frame storage. Again, flat deck fifth wheel features, but wrapped up into a smaller, more towable, half tonnable package. And that's not something that normally happens in this business. So there's a couple things helping, like this should weigh more. 6,600 pounds, it's a chunk, but it really should weigh a lot more. And there's two major things that are helping us here. First of all, is the fact that Winnebago has begun using Asdell in their sidewalls. Now the Voyage travel trailers have never been built without it. It's when the Voyages first came into being that that happened. So this coincides very nicely. Um, 
Also along with that, Winnebago's new production facility has all CNC routed sidewalls for machine precise, uh, well, huh, precision. That's fr uh, from the uh, Department of Redundancy Department, which is based in uh, Lung London, same time zone as England. Thank you, Monty Python, for those references. Um, but the point here is that is cutting out a lot of weight. It's at also offering some noise dampening, some extra thermal protection. Not, not massive in that regard, but every little bit helps. Additionally, the whole chassis of this, like all Winnebago trailers and fifth wheels, it rides on a different chassis. It's a Norco frame made, it's a Z frame made with like an aircraft style construction. It's huck bolted, made with higher strength, lower alloy steel. In English, that means lighter but stronger, but not less expensive. Retirement grade, guys. There's a difference between good and better, and that's what Winnebago's going for here is better. Now, kind of like a Freedom Express or an Apex, they've tongue-mounted the spare tire, and what that's doing for us is leaving the rear uh, area open. If you want to add a bike rack, there's a receiver hitch. You could do that, but um, you don't like stuff isn't fighting it's not in the way now plus weight like that in front of the axles toes a little bit wet uh better than weight behind also very similar to a fifth wheel here you can see this fully enclosed docking center in the same location as you would find it on a fifth wheel and that drop frame uh you know system that they have here is really what's allowing this to happen now they're not the only like eagle ht they do a very similar thing here but regardless it's nice you've got that handy outside little sprayer port there with that hose and uh, this is where you see that big black sticker coming into view that's where the wiring would be located for a solar prep handy battery disconnect and separate cable and satellite hookups it's just a nice little touch so they don't have to come out here with like a jumper wire or anything like that now this says all power stabilizer jacks all the power jacks have their own button and usually when that happens you'll see something like this where there's like two buttons usually that means front jacks and back jacks but in the case of a winnebago they actually have one button for each individual jack which i think is just a neat little control thing and if you note the newer systems they're using if you take a look they move fast, they move quick, they are strong, they're absolutely fantastic. Power jacks have come a long way from where they used to be. I've become a much bigger fan than I used to be. Enclosed underbelly with forced air heating and a double layer radiant barrier in the belly, single layer on the rear wall, the roof, and down the nose for extended season comfort. Jumping to the rear, we see the backup camera prep up top, and if you look at those taillights, you can see the white uh, centers in them. Uh, that is the reverse travel lighting, so that you can actually, you know, see what you're doing if you have a spotter or utilizing a camera. Also kind of cool, a standard 300-pound rated 2-inch receiver hitch on the back here. Again, if you want to do things now, like add a bike rack, a small... A generator tray or something like that you can do so without voiding the warranty of your beautiful Winnebago voyage anti-slip steps all the way through and if you're curious about like upgrading to those uh, you know fold down stable steps that stuff is very easy that can be done here so if that's all you need to take this RV home contact us at Haylet RV and we can help you get uh, outfitted that way but I think that these steps kind of got overlooked uh, in the RV business they're lightweight um, they don't uh, some people say, yeah, well, stable steps flip dirt into my camper. Well, personally, I think you should clean them before you flip them into the RV. But um, if you don't like the stable steps, you don't have to have the stable steps. Here's a good example of that. Anti-slam doors, front and rear, bigger entry handle. And that is a power awning with LED lighting. We're just a little bit too close to the RV next to me with all the inventory we have in stock right now to pop that open. Now, a lot of times on these Winnebago's, when I talk about the roof, I say the phrase all aluminum or rather the structure. Well, the roof skeleton in this is actually a galvanized stamped steel. But I think most people just wanna know, is it a wood skeleton or a metal skeleton? This is a metal skeleton, like metal. Anyway, um, the uh, roof obviously fully walkable. I don't know of a trailer at this budget that isn't. I do wanna point out though, the handy roof solar prep. Um, the uh, you know prep wiring for that is located in the pass-through. So. If you do decide to go solar crazy, this big roof has lots of places that you can do that. And if for some reason this one doesn't trip your trigger, which would be odd because it's a gorgeous trailer. I, I really, like I saw the prototypes of these and uh, the finished product here, oh, spot on. They really, congrats Winnebago, you nailed these things right here. But if this isn't the right one for you, understand Actually, at the time of this filming, we broke a record. We now have over 700 items in stock for you to choose from. So chances are, if it's on wheels, 
we have it, as you can see here at our 15 acre RV Superstore. And whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery and everything in between, the only thing we don't do is hidden dealer fees. And for that, I <laughs> will not apologize. <laughs> the big box stores, they can have them. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet Camping, everyone.